My name is Ira Mayes Besek. I'm the village princess. I am your princess and I'm everybody's princess. I'm back with another story time. But before we get to the story, you know, you know, this functional, this functional family. Can you help me to grow my channel by liking, subscribing and comment? And please share my stories. The more you share, the more people know about the village princess channel and the more the channel grows and the more we inspire somebody out there. Even it's just one person, it does make a difference. Today's story is about a young lady. She's 27 years old. She has a daughter who's HIV positive. I mean, they're both HIV positive, And that's what we're going to be telling, the story that I will be telling today. I hope you enjoy it. For the sake of the story today, my name is going to be uh, Liranzo. Liranzo is the 27 year old, which she's the owner of the story. And I'll be telling the story for her. Uh, I was born in a small place called Maluti in the Eastern Cape. It's a very beautiful rural place with lots of mountains and green vegetation, animals and kids running around. Everybody knows everybody's business. Like there's always somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody that knows about what you're up to. What I mean to say is that everybody knows everybody's business. This is how small and close community that place is. We don't even have much. We just have like two shops, spaza shops and uh, one church, lots of sangomas and uh, one clinic, one primary high school together. We don't have much in that place. So I, will, I believe that I was born out of love because my parents knew each other since they were young. They grew up together. They went to school together. And uh, sometimes my dad would take the animals to the field to go and feed them. Like they, he walks the cows and the goats to the field and while the animals are eating, they spend the whole day there. My mom and dad, they'll be playing in the river or running around after each other. And at some point when my mom was 17, there in the bushes somewhere, she fell pregnant by my father. And that's how I was conceived. That's why I say, I think, I think I was born out of love. I was made out of love because the way these things were happening those days. My father was my grandmother's only child and she was a single mother. She brought him up by herself and when she told, he told her that he impregnated my mother, since she knew that they were dating, she organized some people from the community to go to her family and tell them that they impregnated their daughter and they arranged that she can move in with them. Now it became my grandmother, my father, and then my, my grandmother, my father, and my mom and then me when I was born. But my memories from my childhood is only start from around when I was around four or five years old. I remember my parents shouting at each other, fighting all the time. Me shouting and screaming, I begging them to stop. My grandmother shouting, please stop fighting, begging. My father became so violent that he was beating her up. He was drinking too much and sometimes my mom would fight back to the point that sometimes my grandmother would even call the neighbors to come and separate them. But somehow, they that was their way of loving each other because they, they did not even separate. At some point, I remember I was still young, but my mom carried me on her back with her friends because her friends they would come and tell her that uh, my father was cheating on her with so and so and so and so because the community was so small that everybody knew what what's who is up to he would go and drink and sleep around with the woman because he had a little bit of money he would pay buy drinks and get whoever he wanted to get that day we went my mom and her friends to this woman's place they were shouting, she put me there, she was pointing, you see this child, this child deserves to grow up with the mother and the father. You need to leave my men alone, you need to leave my family alone. You're so ugly that you can't even get your own family. I have my family, please leave my family alone, get your own. She started calling, they were calling her names and everything, it was so ugly, but even though I was young, I still remember these things. They didn't even think about me there, they were just doing their thing. And so, uh, then they stayed together for so many years after that. After some time, my dad moved from Aluti to Durban to look for a better job, to make more money to support the family. He got to Durban and he would be sending money every end of the month or every three weeks, he would be sending money for our upkeeping. Now it's just me, my mom and my grandmother. My grandmother was getting old and my dad was, it seemed like things were getting 
no more but actually it was even nicer when he was away because there was peace in the house it would take long to come to visit uh, in the beginning he used to come often but every time he came it was the same old story they would be fighting screaming at each other my dad would be getting drunk and everything the funny part is that now my dad was accusing my mom of cheating on him because when he would come because she was so tired of his nonsense she would not treat him like a king that the way she used to treat him and now he started saying that now now she's not treating him like a king because she's cheating on him that's why she doesn't she can't wait for him to go back to town meanwhile this man he's busy arranging his life in durban he started dating this i mean he was dating other women but he moved in with this woman he had he started creating another family when we were still there in maluti at some point my mom went there he she didn't even stay two days he sent her back because now he had another wife in town but the thing is he was sending money for for my mom to build the house he said that it's the house for for my, our family house my mom started building the house and at some point when i was a teenager i remember we moved into that new house my grandmother was by herself and my dad by then he was not even coming to visit anymore he would, mm. he, he just disappeared we knew that he was in durban he would be calling once in a blue moon but he was not my mom had to find a job in the area to make money to support me and my at this point it's a, it was me and my two brothers yeah they even even though they had that uh, turbulent lifestyle they still made two more kids oh god how do i get to my story because until now we've been talking about my parents at this point i'm in high school i start dating the bad boy of the area the the guy that all the girls they were after and but he, somehow he chose me and i was so excited that i was the chosen one out of all the girls that liked him and because everybody used to talk about him he used to go to the city and come back with all this uh, swag and that's why the girls liked him and he was a smoker and a drinker and he smoked herbs and, and drinking he was of course a little bit older than me more experienced and he was such a liar but i fell for him like there's no tomorrow we were dating and then suddenly he started he started teaching me the drinking and the smoking and he told me that the, the cool girls in the city they do it and me stupid me wanting to be one of the cool girls I learned how to smoke, how to drink, and I was enjoying it. We were like the couple. We would see us so we'll be <sighs> and drinking together. Late nights, no school, missing school and disrespecting my family at home because now I feel like I'm a big girl. I'm dating the, the big guy. He would travel back and forth to the city. And when he would come back, it was like Father Christmas has arrived in our village gifts for everyone the the grandmas and the, the whole family and my family they'll be getting gifts the neighbors the people the friends from the shabins lots and lots of money i remember he brought this huge tv the bed was like big bed and big bedside everything was big the clothes all these big labels that i knew that they were expensive and i asked him my love what do you do in the city that you have so much money in such a short period of time and then he started laughing. He's like, baby, you know, this man of yours, I am a big man in the city. I just didn't want to tell you because I don't want you to get start getting confused. I am a businessman. I have lots of people working for me in town. One day you'll see when I take you there. But for now, let's stay here and enjoy this life because I like this humble life that we live here. Because now we're living in a very small house, little house, his mother's house this humble life that makes me remember where I come from that's why I prefer to keep it the way things are one day we're gonna go to the city and you'll see what I do there even though you knew that I was pregnant there was mr. smoking uh, uh, lighting one for himself lighting one for his baby that would be me I'm busy smoking we are drinking together whiskey and beers and we'll go to the shabins and everything I'm not even going to the hospital to check on the baby or anything. Life is good at this point. He stayed, this time he stayed quite a while because he really brought a lot of money and things. Uh, but after the money was finished, because he's Mr. 
I buy you, I buy, don't worry, I pay the bill. He's busy doing all these kind of things. He sold the TV, he sold some of his clothes, and he said goodbye. He promised that he was going to be back in maximum 10 days. Now I'm counting, one week, two weeks, three weeks, a month, a month and a half, no news. And meanwhile, I'm busy calling, no answer. This phone is off. I call his friends, his phone is off too. Uh, I, after a month and a half, I get a call from a stranger. He tells me that Fabian called him and they asked him to call me to let me know that Fabian and his friends have been arrested. They're in prison. They are in jail for armed robbery and they're going to be in prison for a very long time. For that, he's asking me to go back to my mother's house and when he comes out, he's going to come and fetch me proper and we're going to get married. Guys, this was like a bucket of water on me, like shh. It was a big shock and I went I told the mother what I just got the call that I just got and I told her that I'm going to move back to my mom because at this point I'm staying there with that lady she was really lovely but the thing is there was no food in the house we were really struggling and then I have a baby I go back to my mom because my plan is that if I can go back to my mom my mom can help me because she was selling things around the house like little bit fruits and things like that I was thinking that she can help me with looking after the baby while I go and look for a job and that's it I called my dad to ask if I could come to Durban to look for a job and while uh, I left and then I left from Maluti to Durban I left the child with my mom I got to my father's house the same things that my father was doing to my mother the abuse he was doing this to his new wife lot of domestic violence lot of shouting and insults and everything I couldn't resist but still I was there in the mission I went and looked for a job I got a job I was a house girl in some very good family I was doing back and forth to my father's house but then at some point I asked them if I could stay there they arranged a room in the back of the house that where I was staying I said goodbye to my father and my stepmother and I went to live there they were really good to me and they knew about my status they would let me once in a once a month go to the clinic to get my pills and everything was fine Today I'm 27 years old, my life is stable, I haven't heard or seen the father of my child and um, my child is back home with my mom. You know, when that happened it was like, it was so horrible because the first cold bucket of water that I got was when I found out that he was an armed robber. The second cold bucket of water that I got, it was when I did my blood test when I went for my prenatal appointment. To find out that and I got my blood results and then I found out that I'm HIV positive that day I died and resonated at the same time this was like <sighs> this is how bad it was but thank God somehow my life is it is what it is today and I'm here I can talk about it I hope some young girl out there when they meet some guys and they have all these things they question and they, they are honest with themselves because in the way at the back of my mind I knew there was something wrong with that but I just I was just enjoying but everything has consequences and this is my consequence that guy was sleeping around with everybody in my area and I believe was doing the same in town and we're having unprotected sex and today here I am I'm sick but I'm, I'm not sick like dying, but I, I'm HIV positive because of that, because I just got caught up in enjoying the good life, not even worried about what is the price to pay. And this is the price that I have to pay. I have to carry this until the end of my days. Thank you so much for listening to my story. I hope I inspire someone out there with my story. Thank you for watching my story. My name is Ira Magnus Bisiki. I'm the Village Princess and I hope to see you on my next story. Please like, subscribe and comment and share my story. You never know who you'll be inspiring out there. I will never stop asking you to share my stories and to comment. Big kiss, lot of love from me, the Village Princess and that love heart from me. Mwah, mwah. Goodbye.